did they have you doing? When you first went to the went to NASA, it was a it was mathematics, but it was uh, the same thing all the time. All the engineers would come up with a set of equations, and you had to run them through what you call a time history. Uh, uh, maybe it was something, some data they wanted to follow for X number of days. So you had big data sheets that big with maybe 15 or 20 columns across and 25 lines down this way. And you set your variable as down this way and solve those all the way across for days. Well, it was fascinating to me. For one thing, working in, I skipped working in Mr. Evans' office after school. He had a calculator, one of these big desk calculators. So I knew how to do it. So when I went to this job, I had a, I was already one step up. I knew how to do use the equipment. So I got along fine. Then, uh, as would happen, if an engineer in a branch over here was doing specific research and wanted a mathematician full time, all he had to do was pick one and ask for one. So, uh, about how many mathematicians, uh, black mathematicians? At that time, I think there were 13 or 14 in our pool. All women? All women. And you had a woman supervisor. Why all women? Why no black men? A lot of men do things. They didn't want black engineers. They weren't ready for black engineers. They didn't start hiring black engineers till a couple of years after that. And the black engineers had a hard time. They, they were very, very prejudiced against them. But the black women, they, you know, that was okay. And they preferred the black mathematicians. They said we were better than, than white girls. For one thing, all of us had been to college, and they hired white mathematicians. All you had to do was know the right people. Some of them were college grads, and some were not. But uh, you settled in. I settled in, and I was lucky. I got I was sent to the flight research division. And uh, for the first three years, though, I did the same monotonous work that everybody else did, but it suited me fine. It was mathematics. And uh, one of the jobs was really interesting. You, you've heard of the black boxes on the airplanes. Well, we read the film that came off this black box and had to sit in a dark room like this and read those, the coordinates of those curves. And then after a while you were taught to uh, take that data and convert it into miles per hour or angles per such as whatever it was, but I mean for a time you didn't know what it was, you just read the data on the tape. Then uh, one set that I was particularly interested in, a plane had crashed, a little piper had crashed, and they didn't know why. What if it was flying along, tended to its business and just dropped like that. So they tested the uh, area around it and discovered that a big jet had just gone, it had just gone under perpendicular to uh, the path of this jet. And the uh, air wind stream from that big jet was too much for it. Well, they didn't, they found this out by reading the little black box from the, and that, that report came out was one of the most interesting things I had ever seen. And, and the guys who worked, worked on it were interested too because that had never happened before. So it caused a change in the rules and the airways. They had rules, but they were not rigid enough. They, they got, then they had to separate the path from east-west and north and south, they had to separate it at least a thousand feet. 